Hey, what's going on, guys? Perry the Entertainer here, giving you guys another video, giving you guys an Impact Wrestling review tonight. Um, since I said I want to get more into TNA, this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to start making reviews on TNA, um, do some rants on TNA, and basically, you know, talk about TNA some more. Since I really just talk about WWE on my channel, why don't I focus more on TNA as well? So, and I know it is very, um, uh, kind of bad that I'm wearing the Miz hat and I'm doing a TNA thing, so I don't think that, um, it's, de I don't think it's the best thing, but you know what? It works, so let's start this. Another new update is down here, right here, like right at the bottom of the screen, there will be the match that I'm talking about, or, you know, if I'm talking about a segment, um, it will be down here. It will be on my Raw recaps, my SmackDown, my new SmackDown recaps, and my new Impact Wrestling recaps. So yes, it will be on all three. I'll try and make them. Might take a little longer than it's supposed to be up, but if you guys, if you guys bear with me, I'm glad to make them. So uh, give me some thoughts and opinions on that. If you don't like it, I just won't do it. Um, but I, this is more how I want to get focused on the uh, subject at hand. So. Let's start this. We started off with a segment from Bully Ray. He calls out Mr. Anderson, saying basically he does not like how he's playing the fence. And basically he's on the mortal side one week, and then he's on the out other side. You know, they don't have an exact name. They're not like the main event mafia in the front line from like th two, three years ago. Um, but, you know, so he gives him a decision. He has to make his decision tonight. Is he going to join Immortal, or is he going to join the other side? And, um, basically that's what happened. And then, basically it was announced that the main event will be a... My bad. The main event will be a... A four-on-two tag, or four-on-two handicap match. will be Immortal, Scott Steiner, Gunner, um, Bully Ray, and Abyss. Versus Miss uh, Sting and Mr. A er, Sting and Kurt Angle, the new number one contender, who I think will get his shot at uh, No Surrender in September. Um, either that or the one after. I don't know exactly all. I don't know them all by heart right now. Um, they're on my website though, so definitely. Um, good, good to good to start the show. Um, oh, before I start this, this impact was mainly focused on the X division, and honestly. I loved every almost every minute of this paper. Well, almost. I said almost. Um, so to start off, I'd give it a six. It was basically like a WWE thing where you just okay, where you know you have the really it was okay segment at the beginning uh, to set up the main event. So it's not like it's not like uh, it's been the first time to see this. Um, the first match was a Bound for Glory series match, like right here. Crimson versus Bobby Roode, a.k.a. Robert Roode, tag team champions. Um, okay match, very short match here. Um, Crimson really mainly focused on his, uh, injured shoulder. Um, basically, it was, it was a very okay match, I don't think so, but Crimson, his streak is still alive. Uh, Crimson ends up getting, I think, seven more, uh, points. I don't know exactly the entire thing here. Um... Very okay match here. Um, I definitely think Crimson should lose some match this month. Um, definitely, because if they're going to pull a Samoa Joe with him, I'm not interested. Uh, hopefully they don't. And speaking of Samoa Joe, where is he? Exactly, my point. Um, Bobby Roode, he just kind of needs to calm, because I know... Him and uh, Storm, you know, they get along very well. And I want to see what they do as singles competitors. I don't want to see what they do as a group. It's actually exactly like the Nexus. I want to see them more as individuals and not as a huge group. Because as a team, as a group, they are more dominant. But I want to see them as more individuals. So that's my main thing there. Then the final X Division Showcase took on the Triple Threat Match. Uh, Jesse Sorensen, Andy ne Anthony Nice, and Jack Evans. Very entertaining match here. Everyone was flying around the ring. Um, I really enjoyed this match. Um, basically, it was basically like a Rey Mysterio match. Well, I, I wouldn't even... Why did I do that? I don't even think that uh, they should be compared to Rey Mysterio. This was a good match. Jack Evans wins this. 
Um, he does this amazing uh, 670 thing. He does this double front flip of, uh, from the top rope. Very good match here. Um, definitely give this probably an 8 out of 10. Very good match. Uh, Sorensen, I hopefully... Uh, Sorensen or Nice, I hopefully this is not the last time we see these guys. So, um, I hope so. Um, so that sets up the four-way. It will be Jack Evans, Loki, Austin Aries, and I can't say the last guy's name. Shima, Siran, or whatever. I can't say his la I can't say his name. Um, it will be on the website. Go check that out. Also in the description. Very, very entertaining match here, and I'm definitely expecting a lot out of Destination X. Uh, third match was Velvet Sky and o uh, Velvet Sky taking on ODB and Jackie. This is a fine, average TNA knockouts match. Um, basically, Velvet got her ass kicked at the beginning. ODB, just seriously. Uh, but before that, I want to start talking about Sting and his Joker thing. It was a great. Uh, he had a locker room promo. It was great with uh, with um, uh, Kurt Angle. I am enjoying this. I'm enjoying this new gimmick that Sting has. I'm really enjoying that. But um, I don't want to focus more on this match. This match was fine. Uh, basically what happened here, I guess, um, if ODB and Jackie lost, they would be out of TNA. And I really don't care. I'll be honest, I really don't care. Ever since Awesome Kong left, I really haven't cared. Um, you're champions in WWE Diva. Whatever. Ugh. Not a good match. I definitely rate that a 4 out of 10. Not the best match. But we move on to a similar, very good match. Rob Van Dam, Jerry Lynn, Christopher Daniels, and AJ Styles. The only main problem I had about this, it was too short. What I, because I guarantee you that the Daniels Styles match this week, uh, this weekend will definitely be very, very long, very, I said very, very long. Um, I really, I didn't like how they did this, basically like a tag team thing. I basically didn't like that. I thought it was supposed to be a fatal four way. I was expecting a lot out of this match. Still very good match. Very good. High flying, basically my favorites. Um, but RVD gets the win on a five-star frog splash on Christopher Daniels after Jerry Lynn hits a um, something on uh, Christopher Daniels. So, uh, congratulations to RVD. I still do not know why RVD has not been on the past two pay-per-views. Why? Why? He wasn't at Slammiversary. He's not booked for Destination X. What up? What's up? Seriously. Oh my god. Um, but anyway, then we move on to another uh, Bound for Glory series match. Matt Morgan and James Storm versus Devon um, and the Pope. It was an okay tag team match, like like any other tag team match. Um, momentum really shifted after Storm tagged himself in. Uh, Pope barely got any time after being slammed. Um, fine, fine match. Uh, definitely probably a five. It was an okay um, but Storm got hit with a championship belt, um, I don't know exactly which one, I think it was probably the, ex the explosion thing, he hit him with the championship thing, and let Devon pin him, so Devon got the points, um, very nice thing for Pope to do, I think Devon is now in third place in the overall standings, um, so very good here, um, Pope, at least Pope really can show some compassion. Matt Morgan, I don't know what's up with him. What are they doing with him? Um, he was in the main event for almost almost the entire beginning of 2011. Very, he was a very young and underused talent at the time, but now I think he's being overused. Um, James Storm, like I said about Robert Roode, um, seriously, get this guy off of tag team. Give him some singles com competition. Um, Brother Devon, I don't know what they're doing with him. Um, I don't exactly, I don't know what they're doing with him. Uh, ever since his split with Bully Ray, it's just been going down the drain. He has not had really any sort of good, um, 
any sort of good, what am I trying to say, storylines, any good feuds that he's had. And TNA only has one show. It's not like Raw or SmackDown where, you know, oh, who's getting drafted here, who's getting drafted here. No, they're all on one show, so you can see any of your favorite talents go against each other. And TNA just won't do it, so. And then the Pope, um, I don't know what's up with him. I don't know what's up with him either. Um, this guy could have been a huge main eventer um, early in his career. Definitely, definitely think he should be in the top five of this uh, series thing. Crimson and uh, Gunner really do um, believe this. They, sh they should be in the uh, top three. But honestly, I think the Pope should be in there. Pope is very underused now. Um, and ever since uh, Desmond Wolf's release, you know, ex that explosion's really not going anywhere. So that's my main problem with uh, most of all these guys. So let's move on to the last match. Immortal, like the four guys I said, versus Sting and Kurt Angle. But before this match got started, Sting got attacked by Hulk Hogan in the back um, with his bat. This was a funny, funny segment, even though Sting got his ass kicked. Um, very funny here. Angle really got his ass kicked during the entire thing. Um, as Bully Ray got his chain out, he was going to hit him with the chain. Um, Mr. Anderson comes down, and basically they act like they're a tag team. He hits uh, all four members of Immortal, only to go for the uh, mic check on Bully Ray. Stops, he throws Bully Ray away, and he hits the mic check on Angle instead, proving that he will be Immortal. He is part of Immortal. Um... He leaped into Abyss's arms and basically ended the show with Hulk Hogan clapping. It was an okay show. Very good show here. Um, like I said, I'm going to point out some of my flaws here. Um, Scott Steiner, I think he's being underused right now. Um, I know he's, you know, because he's getting very old and stuff. Um, and they have to kind of underuse him like exactly like what they're doing with The Undertaker and Triple H. But still, this guy is very good. He's still a very good wrestler at his age. I don't know exactly his age off the top of my head, but he's still a very good wrestler at his age. Um, I was actually hoping for his uh, push-up thing that he did. He would hit the one, too, and he would go for the push-ups. I didn't see it in this match. But, um, that's my problem with Steiner. I think they should use him a little bit more than they already do. Abyss? I'm not, I'm not impressed with Abyss anymore. He's the X-Division champion. You're the champion of a bunch of high flyers. I mean, and you're not even a high flyer yourself. You're like 350 pounds. Any problem here? That's like if the Great Khali was the Cruiserweight champion. That's for all the WWE fans that are watching this video. It's like if the Great Khali was the Cruiserweight champion at the time. It just doesn't mix. Um, Definitely take that title off of him. Put him in the main event, seriously. Um... Since I can't think of anything else to put him in, don't give him the X Division title. Oh my god. Um, Gunner, I definitely like this guy. I have been a fan of this guy really since his thing with Gunner and Murphy really split. Gunner was the one that stayed with uh, Immortal. Very talented guy here. I definitely recommend this guy. And I def I wouldn't be surprised if he wins the overall Bow for Glory thing. I would not be surprised at all. Um, then again, if it was Crimson, I'd kind of be shocked because this is a push too far, definitely, just in my opinion. Um, and then, leaving me last with Bully Ray. Man, is this guy good. He's actually, like I said, with the whole, you know, let him complete, compete as singles competitors, Bully Ray is definitely the guy, he was definitely the better one coming out of here. And I definitely... He's the, one of the best talkers in TNA right now. It's a good trash talker. Man, does this guy draw heat, too. Oh, man. This guy, he was talking during the match. He would talk to just like, you know, he would talk and, you know, he'd be whispering to Abyss or something. And he's getting heat for it. And I'm like, jeez, this guy can draw heat. Oh, man. And I know... You know, this, you know, heel and face, okay, you know, I don't care about that. But still, he drew heat for me. And that's a bad, like, that's very good in your opinion. If you can draw heat from somebody, you know, who makes videos and stuff too, like I do, you're definitely good. You're definitely up there 
with the talents. And I definitely don't think he should be that low in the overall standings in the Balfour Glory series. I definitely don't think so. Um, Kurt Angle, I'm glad that he is back in the world title picture. He should not have been in that feud with Jarrett for that long. Just That feud just irritated me. And, you know, for Jarrett to go into Mexico, his first pretty much his first day there, and he's the AAA champion. What? Where did this come from, you know? Uh, but I am glad that Kurt Angle is in the world title picture, and I'm glad he's getting his world title uh, match, and I hope he wins it, actually. So, um, I already talked about Sting. Mr. Anderson, here's my main thing about Mr. Anderson. Honestly, I could care less about his gimmick. Because you, he's basically acting like Stone Cold. And I really don't like that. Um, give him, you know, let him have his own gimmick. Uh, you know, like, I know that's probably exactly how he acts, you know, around town and stuff. But I don't agree with everything he says. Um, I not, I've, I am a fan of him, don't get me wrong. Um, but I've never seen Sting like this. So that's probably one of the reasons why I like Sting more than Anderson right now. Um... At the, at the, after, like, last month, I liked Anderson more than Sting, definitely. But now I like Sting's, uh, his character, his mic skills have been getting better. Why, why am I saying mic skills? They don't even have mic skills anymore. They don't even have mics. Uh, but, um, overall, very good show. I definitely give this show probably a seven. Um, not a sleep-through pay-per-view at all. Why did I say pay-per-view? <laughs> not a sleep-through show at all. Um, very good show in my opinion. Give me your thoughts and opinions down below. Um, please subscribe up below as well. I said up, 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 up above, please. Go subscribe up below. I quit. I'm not saying that anymore. <laughs> anyway, um, that it was my TNA review. Um, I know that this is like one of the longer TNA <laughs> Uh, videos that I've made, and honestly, I'm glad that t uh, YouTube gave me the uh, opportunity to make videos longer than 15 minutes, otherwise, this would be having some major cutting right now, uh, but thank you guys for watching, um, please like this video, and um, that will do it, I also want to give one little plug out real quick, well, two actually, um, first one goes to Nasty RKO Specialist, former member of the BWE Entertainers. Please go subscribe to him. Link is down in the description. And also, please go subscribe to Night W11. Very good here. Very good guy. Uh, talk to him. He's very good. Um, good piano player. Uh, everything. He's just, he's just a great guy in general. So, link is down in the description. Go subscribe to them too. And, I'm um, out. Perry the Entertainer signing off. And... Peace out.